عليكم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين Today our intention is to reflect on the divine name Al-Mujib May Allah help us to uh, reflect on it to try to recognize it It is mentioned in the Quran uh, I think in one verse and uh, it generally means the one who responds, the one who responds, the one who answers, uh, who replies. Uh, yes, yes, Jawad. Yes, yes. Yeah. <laughs> so that's that's where that's exactly what it is. Yes. Yeah. So, uh, so may Allah help us to understand this name. Uh, in fact, God always responds, and that's that's the gist of today's reflection: is to recognize that God always responds. But how does He respond? That's the question. And why don't we call on to God? Because many times we either don't know God uh, or don't believe that He will respond. So today's reflection is to reflect on the divine as the one who always responds to the call of every person, whoever, not just person, every creature, uh, whoever that creature is. Uh, okay, so let's uh, reflect on the first verse here in closed translation. And on to the tribe of Thamud. We sent their brother Saleh. He said... O oh, my people, worship God alone. You have no God other than Him. He brought you into being out of the earth and made you thrive thereon. Ask Him, therefore, to forgive you your sins and then turn towards Him in repentance, for verily my sustainer is ever near, responding to the call of whoever calls unto Him. So here there is a wonderful approach that is teaching us uh, about God. So first, the Prophet Saleh, and he was one of the, the prophets uh, that are not mentioned in, in the Bible. Uh, he's one of, one of the prophets. There are several that are not particularly mentioned in the Bible. So he's one of them. Uh, where before he is actually saying even turn to God, he is reminding who God is. Who is God? God is the one that there is no other God than Him. The one who is creating you, the one who is creating everything you are thriving with. So, making it real. Who is God? The one who is giving you life. The one who is giving you food. The one who is giving you kids. The one who is creating everything you see in front of you. Is there other than him? Is there another God other than him? Meaning, is there any other force, any other life force, any other deity? No, because it's, uh, can, can I be the source of my own life? Can the tree be the source of its own life? Can the sun just move by itself, do all these amazing things that it's doing by itself? No, because it doesn't make sense. A book cannot write itself and a son cannot raise by itself. It means the one who is raising the son is your God. So worship him alone. Why are you just uh, imagining that uh, you are uh, uh, by yourself, that you are uh, torn into imagining that uh, there are many different sources of life in, in our life. What I mean by this, just to make it more practical. Uh, practically, we, in our heart, uh, we feel as if some people have power, some things have power, some uh, tools have power, some totems have power, some 
you know, our past has its own power. Uh, uh, the future has some power. The boss has a power. The uh, uh, friends have power. So my, if when my friends don't, it's almost like I have to worship my friends so that they will like me. If I feel that they are not liking me, my life is destroyed, what will they do? It, in all these, our heart is scattered into many, many pieces, as if we have to uh, uh, make sure that everybody likes us, everybody. I have to do all these things almost as if I am their slave, their servant. I'm talking in our hearts, not in our how we are behaving. We are torn in our heart. Our heart is not feeling this freedom that in fact everything, the ones that I thought have all this power, in fact they don't have any power by themselves. All are servants of God. My boss, tomorrow, the past, my food, uh, my kids, my parents. This has enormous psychological impact into our life. That's it, I don't know. Uh, 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 uh. Yeah. I just have something to say. Yes. Can I say we know it by our brain? Because we don't know it by our heart. Our mm -hmm. heart, it's the nature. And the nature of the human being is believing in mm -hmm. God. Mm -hmm. So that's not how we believe in things. We believe in it with our brain mm -hmm. or what we see or how we grow. Mm -hmm. Because we are born Muslim. It's our way of our life or mm. our past through life that's what makes us like something else. Mm. So I don't know, if you believe in your heart, I don't think we believe it with our heart. We believe it with our brain, with our culture, with our where we grow up, with our house, our parents are. Mm. Mm. That's not in our heart. Mm. Yes, uh, that's that's right. That's. I think I think it's um, a downfall of humans to at times lose sight of God and lose sight of the belief and the faith in God, and and at times we assign power to materialistic things, things that really shouldn't, things that don't deserve. Only God deserves that. But I think it's it's the downfall of human nature that sometimes we lose sight. Yeah, you know. You know, like the the Jews they take the baby to the temple to make him Jews. The Christian they take the baby to make him Christian. The Muslim they say they adapt in the baby's ear. So we all go Muslim. We all born with our heart. With yes, the heart. Fear. The heart is born. The person's heart Muslim. is born na naturally Jesus. inclined to surrender to God. Yes. Now, now what happens though is, uh, in time, we uh, uh, can put many layers upon exactly. our heart, which is the reason of not being peaceful and satisfied. Because if you see a, a baby uh, who is naturally inclined to be uh, in rest in God, actually, uh, uh, they are generally happy. I mean, yes, they cry, but they cry when they have needs. But, but in fact, they're peaceful. Even the children are peaceful. Now, once we start uh, naturally going out of our nature, which, is, which means that uh, in front of our hearts, we start putting these layers. Then we start to look for oh, that peace, that uh, um, uh, rest in God that we don't feel. And that is the reason of many of us uh, not feeling anxiety, satisfied. Uh, all of it, all of it. Anxiety, depression, what is going on with life, fearing death, fearing anything. Uh, all this is, is the, 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 the result of uh, man-made. Yes, man-made. So, so, uh, so what happens then is uh, what needs to happen is we need to 
jala al qulub we need to cleanse cleanse our heart jala al qulub is remembrance of god what I, we mean by remembrance of god is not just sometimes it's just understood to be this mechanical repetition of the heart but these days we have these computers and iPhones which can mechanically repeat many things but they are not transformed so it means it's not a mechanical repetition but it's being mindful of who God is and this being mindful of who God is in time cleanses our heart when we say heart we are talking about uh, uh, our inner eye, our intuition, our sense of, it's deeper than the mind. See, the mind sometimes, it's all together in fact, but, but sometimes in, in the mind we can intellectually say many things. You know, you can intellectually say uh, uh, smoking is very bad, intellectually. But you can be so much uh, attracted, attached to it, that although your mind says it's something not nice, I don't want to do it, you find yourself to be driven to, to it. There is a verse in the Quran, لَهُمْ أَلَهُمْ يَعْقِلُونَ يَعْقِلُونَ بِهَا So the Quran is saying, do they have hearts which they could reason with? You say, we are generally used to think reasoning is an intellectual activity, but actually there is a deeper level of the reasoning where you are talking about. It's beyond, it's, it's, it's this connection. Uh, you know, in the world of science right now, mm -hmm. you know, even non-Muslim, they believe that we think with our heart because the heart that's giving the brain is the blood. So without the heart, the brain is not going to have blood, so it's going to stop. Yes. So we think with our heart. Yes, sometimes and also. Yes. Uh, yes. So. It matches even with the sign. Yes. But but even, yes, w wonderful. And even they say actually there are three three brains. There is the gut yeah. brain and the, the heart and the mind. Now they are talking about these three three sides. But even I think what the brother Zafir was talking about even deeper than that. What connects these three uh, sides of us is our true nature which is which is our spirit so 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 many times what what we mean by heart is really means this part of us that is not from here you see we are actually visitors in this life we have this part of us that is spirit and spirit is not bound by time and space it is a gift from god uh, that is going to continue forever and that that part of us is the part that has a cognition of God. That is the part that recognizes what infinity means. That is the part that recognizes, in fact, all these divine attributes we talk about. The mind, as we know, is just an instrument for the spirit. It's a collection, it's a mechanism. It's like the one who is on the, in the seat is the spirit. The car is just the tool. But who is driving is the spirit. The same thing, actually, using this example. It's all instruments. My gut feeling is an instrument. My heart emotion center, in that sense. We weren't talking about it as an emotion center. That's what I'm trying to say. So in emotion center, gut feeling, intellect, hands, senses, five senses. And now we have actually many inner senses. They are all instruments where we collect many things from life so that all of this becomes uh, a way to recognize what is beyond. Uh, uh, let me give you an example. Uh, so, you look at the, 
you look at a painting or a sunrise with your eyes, that's an instrument. You use your feet, that's an instrument. But you when, when you go there and you just feel a sense of awe and love. Now, that is actually co cognition that is not of the eyes. The eyes were used as an instrument. The brain actually, in fact, not used much in that sense. But what has, who has recognized this beauty that is in the sunrise as well as in the tree, as well as in your hand, as well as in your face, is, the, is this beauty that is manifested everywhere. Our spirit, Ar-Ruh, recognizes that, yes. And that is the real knowing now, because it is, uh, yeah, uh, it is beyond the space and time, because once you recognize that beauty, uh, that recognition, it does not go away. And when you say, go to that beauty, you actually stop for a little bit. See, when we stop, what we are, we are stopping our brain functioning. If our brain is very, very busy, we can't go to that feeling of beauty. We have to like, Allah, yeah. See, at that moment, actually, we slow down. We are not thinking about our hands. We are not thinking about, oh, I have to calculate this. It's not calculation. It's not, it's, it's, it's going to that placeless place in us that recognizes the beauty. Oh, subhanAllah, yes. Where did we go? Where are we going? SubhanAllah. But it is there. <laughs> so that is our part that will continue. That is our real, uh, who we are. Uh, amazing. Thank you for uh, reminding us of who we are, yeah. Uh, it's amazing, in fact, when we think about something, but when we understand it, it is when we stop this whole thinking process, they say, ah. When we say this, ah, it's in fact after the instrument did all the bringing all the ingredients. Oh, now I recognize. See, it's, the one who does the recognition is not the one who is very busy bringing all these, see, what the brain does, in fact, is just helps us to compare, helps us to uh, do many of these intellectual activities, but sort through. But the one who gets this ah feeling, or this feeling of awe, or this, uh, this feeling that lets my, uh, all my body sometimes tremble, or, or my, my eyes water, it's a deeper, much deeper feeling uh, that we all have, subhanAllah. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's the part of us uh, uh, that, uh, that we need to discover. So here, uh, uh, see this, this uh, verse is like a vehicle. The verse is taking us somewhere. It says, you know, worship God, the one that is bringing you into being, that is making you and making everything you strive thereon. It is not intended to just stop with the verse. The verse is inviting me to reflect. And when you reflect, say, oh, bringing me out of, oh, who is the one who is bringing me out? See, that is the cognition. That is the real recognition of God. That is, that is why actually many scholars said the silence after the verse is, is the gist of what happens. That, that's why they say sometimes the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, when he would read, he would respond to the verse, either as subhanAllah or as alhamdulillah, or as just being in silence of the of what it is saying. See, because it requires me now to reflect. It's not saying something, oh, yeah, God is the one who will bring out. Okay, yeah, yeah, okay, so this is information now. We're just going very fast. No, no, slow down. What does this mean? Oh, 
He is the one who is bringing everything into existence. Who is He? Closer to me than myself. Subhanallah. God, you are amazing. Everything you are making. La ilaha illallah. Subhanallah. Alhamdulillah. See, we are stopping. And we are responding. This response now comes out of the recognition of the a, 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 a amazement that is coming out of the message, where the message took me. Now, where it took me, it, it, it let me recognize, recognize many things. Uh, so, if I would know the one, come to know the one who is bringing me into being out of nothing, then, if you know, then ask him. Because then you recognize that nothing happens without him. That is the recognition. Because you know now that even a movement of, a, of one leaf in one tree would not happen if, does, if God does not create it. How can a leaf move by itself? Does a leaf know how to interact with the, with the air, how to interact with the surrounding. Is the leaf that clever? No, the leaf is move, moving by God. God is making it move. As God is making it move, it's also God is the one who makes your uh, eyelids. eyelids move too. <laughs> Subhanallah. So if I know that, then you say, Subhanallah, oh Allah, Make my tomorrow, I am in need of you to, to create me a, a, a nice tomorrow. But I know you create everything nice, so make me able to recognize your goodness in it. Make me recognize your mercy in it. Make me not heedless of you. Make me not from the ones who are heedless of you. See, the one who is asking this sincerely can only do so if he really recognizes that the next moment cannot happen unless God creates it. Otherwise, it's lip service. Oh, I'm praying to God, but things are happening. Oh, where is God? How are things happening? You think things are happening by themselves? You're asking, where is God? So God is just watching somewhere? That is your understanding of God, that someone who watches and life is just happening? How is life happening? How is this breath coming, how is this movement happening, how, is, how am I able to think, how am I able to see, who is making this ability of the nerves function in my body, who is letting me recognize the beauty in front of me, the, oh, the more I recognize that there is oneness, meaning nothing can move without God moving it, real oneness of, of the source the more my prayer becomes sincere. Because you just recognize there is only one mover. So God, you are the one who creates. See, it, it doesn't become lip service anymore. That's why see how the verse is actually structured. First, reminding us of who God is. Then if you know who God is, ask him to forgive you your sins. What is the biggest sin of forgetting who he is? So forgive my sin of forgetting who you are. La ilaha illallah. That is the biggest sin we say. See, I'll use actually, let me use traditional words. They say, God forgive every sin except associating partners with him. Now we make so many things out of this, but what does it mean if I believe that a leaf moves by itself? I am associating the leaf with God. I am thinking that the leaf can move by itself. It, it has the ability to function by itself. The tree has the ability to function by itself. My boss has the ability to think by himself, function by himself. This is the associating of partners. It means I divided what is God's to so many people, and now I say, where is God? Well, there is nothing left that is, that, that is, it was all God's making. Now we are 
dividing it to everything. So it's like a, it's like a movie, if you are watching a movie. Uh, if you forget that the characters in the movie, they are all just moving because the projector is there. And you start imagining that this character moves by himself, this character moves by herself, this character moves by herself. You're already dividing all what God is doing to many people. So instead of that, just recognize, for the movie example, it's all cannot move. It's not this, the characters that are moving. It is the projector that is projecting. Same thing, it is, it is only one cause of the causes. These are secondary causes. Yeah. If we are talking in secondary matter, yes, of course, we talk this, we use language. Oh, you, I should, I, I, you shouldn't have done that. This shouldn't have. This is secondary. But when we come to the reality, we say, la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. What does it mean? La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. There is no movement, nor any power, except with God. That is what we mean. It means, at the end of the picture, I go back to the primary cause. Secondary cause is, is for me to function in life, but if I am functioning in the secondary causes, but my heart is recognizing the primary cause, then you are so peaceful. You need to do what the secondary causes are asking you to, but you recognize everything is the, in the hand of the primary cause. And that gives you the peace. There is no one that is really in charge other than him. So, la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. It erases everything. There is no power, no movement save with him. That is what we say. Subhanallah, it is so amazing. But how about not saying, but it is pointing, this, this, this sentence is pointing to a reality. How about seeing it? Oh. Then you stop and you start asking the question. Oh, God, I just thought that you were so far and things were happening by themselves. Forgive me for my biggest sin, the sin of forgetting who you are, of forgetting that you are the source of everything. And turning towards him, so turning in my heart towards the sun that never sets. That's, of course, an idiom. The one that never sets, the, God, the, the source that never sets. And then recognizing, verily, my sustainer is ever near. See? Then we start to see, oh, he's ever near. Closer to me than myself, responding to the call of whoever calls on to it is an amazing, in fact, meaning here. When you call, your call is, in fact, the answer. Your call is the recognition that there is only one who responds to call. So you, our call, in fact, means that God, you are, see, I mean, many of the uh, prayers of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, in, in, imbued with the divine names. You are Arhamar Rahimim. And then, maybe something practical. But you are reminding yourself first that the only one who can give this, the only one who can create this, the only one who can give me peace of mind is him. This recognition, the back, of it? Who is, who is letting me recognize that? You know what I mean? I'm, uh, uh, so, uh, so the prayer becomes a reminder of who God is. That's why Mujib becomes the reality of our prayers. We never say, my prayers are never answered. We start saying, God always answers my prayers. You say, but my friend, you've been asking for to be healed. You haven't been healed for a long time. You say, no, 
I've been asking to be healed and God is healing me through his own way. So it's, it means that now he's healing me through continuing the sickness. Because you recognize that and Mujib, the one who is always responding, is always here. He's always... My prayer is only the reminder of me, the one who forgets that God is here, to remind me again that God is always responding. So you melt your worry, like a worry, for instance, of sustenance comes to you. Oh God, you are the sustainer. Sustain. This prayer itself is a reminder that God always sustains. Of course, we might be asking for practical things, but then we feel that God is always the one who responds for these practical things too. So we are very confident that if it is time for these practical things to be given, He will give it. If it's not time for it, it means God is giving me something better at this very moment. Yes, please. Uh, I, sorry, I, was, I wanted just to finish the sentence. Yeah. There is three ways of answering our prayer. It's either given to us the way we ask it and just lie there, or not even give it to us because what we're asking is harmful for ourselves. Mm. So he doesn't give it to us because he knows better. Mm. So when we ask God for something and we don't get it, he loves us more than we love ourselves. Mm. So he doesn't give it to us because he answers our prayer. Or the third degree is he holds for us. So we go to heaven and reward us for that the most. So that's the meaning of because we all sometimes pray and we don't get what we pray for. Yes. But that's not because we didn't listen. It's because we didn't ask for something good for us, so he knows better, so he answered for not getting to us. Or he wanted us to have the best reward that we can have it, so he will come to heaven. Yes, and, and we can bring that heaven to here in our hearts because the, the smell of heaven it always is infused in the, in the heart. And now when we speak about the heart, we're speaking about this deeper part of us that recognizes uh, God. So that's why um, the, the beauty of the heaven starts always in the heart of the believer. It's in the heart. So when we are, in fact, in our prayer, recognizing inside the one who answers, the one who is nearer to me than myself, the taste of that, the smell of that, the mm, uh, aroma of that, Feeling uh, sometimes is so deep. We feel the nearness of God, and you are walking here. And sometimes you forget what you asked for practically. And then you realize, actually, actually, oh, God gave me that practical problem just to remind me of this taste, the, the endless taste of the, of the one who is near, the nearness. It's like, it's like you found, you know, there is this uh, wonderful, uh, uh, from the uh, Tabi'in, the, uh, the ones who, followers of the companions, came after the companions. Uh, he said, uh, uh, if the kings knew the beauty that we had in our hearts, they would try to come with their armies to try to get it, but they will not be able to. What he means is that sometimes we think the, the, what we are looking for is in the things, but in fact, what we discover in our heart with the nearness of God turns out to be more precious than anything can give us. Because you can have all the things and you'll start to be bored. You'll be actually sick of, you know, say I have all the money, I have everything, you know, that everybody is looking for physically. And even you have any, everything. And you are so bored, out of your boredom. And we hear this, right? With many 
famous people and what is this then? It means something is not being fulfilled that is very deep inside. And sometimes you see someone that is not particularly very rich. I mean, it's not about the money anyways, but, but not particularly, but so peaceful. He's not looking for anything extra. It's like, what is this? What do you have? So that is the beauty of Iman. That is the beauty of connection with God. That is the, that is the precious gift that God gives. Uh, and that comes here. So don't say, let's not say, oh, you know, believers, they will have very tough time here, but in the heaven. No, 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 no. They might have tough times physically. But the, but the taste of the Iman is, needs to be in the heart. Otherwise, it means we are not, we didn't find it. That is the real peace, you know. Many things can happen outside. So by definition then, the prophets are the most peaceful people, the happiest in terms of uh, being uh, satisfied with life. Although you might say, oh, but this person, this prophet was killed, this prophet lost his family, this prophet was prosecuted. Yes, but they were so peaceful, so full. Uh, Subhanallah. In the they say, you know, they look for halal to the iman based mm. on the sweetness of faith. Yes. And it's that essence. Yes. Of yes. Of yes. Yes. And that is what is it? That's called. That's. They sorry. say, Warada Allahum Anhu, Warada Muhammad. Without Allah, Allah. 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 Yes. So to say it. Yes. What in, what in fact you said, just to, let me to translate. In fact, for many scholars, they mention that as the, one of the highest uh, uh, levels of Iman, which is God is pleased with them and they are pleased with God. Now, they are pleased with God has many implications. Because what does it mean, uh, I'm pleased with God? It means, oh, why my life is like this with that person? Please, would God say this? Because he recognized already that God's creating everything. Oh, why is it happening this way? Why my kids are that way? No, no, no. Complete peace with God's decree. It means I am in complete rhythm of whatever is happening. That is a, that is a high level. What I mean by high level it doesn't mean we can't achieve. I mean... I mean, it means we have went through uh, many layers and layers of emptying our assumption that, uh, of what this life is supposed to be. And we have surrendered to God's way. It means we have nothing out of ourselves anymore. We have no, it means like we have no, and don't misunderstand me, but I, I want to say it, we have no dream of life that is opposite to what God's decree is. That doesn't mean we stop our dreams and we are unhappy. No, it means we're just... How to we say? succumb to his... Surrender. Will. Yeah, surrender. Thy will be done, right? Thy will, yes. will be done, as this it's mentioned. God, God doesn't listen to our prayer for our dreams and love because he wants to hear our voice. So when you ask God for something and you're going to give it to you because he loves you, he loves to hear your voice. What kind of time do you say that? You don't want you, you don't want to ask for it. You want to ask for it because like like when you love your kid and you enjoy sitting and talking to them, sometimes you, you, you bring a story or bring uh, something to bring them around you to talk to. So he bring us, he doesn't give to us because he loves us. And sometimes he gives us everything because he doesn't like us. He doesn't want to hear our voice. So whatever we ask, take it. Take it. I don't want to hear your voice. So that's how it is. How is the happiness in the heart? Subhanallah. And, yeah. Getting it or not? Subhanallah. So, in fact, uh, it's very interesting. Uh, it's all about God's nearness. Uh, because God's nearness to us 
is really the same. God is the create, creator of everyone. It's our recognition of him that is different. So when we say, I am not, God is not close to me, it is, I am in my heart, in my, imagi in my mind, in my imagination, I perceive God to be away. In fact, God always is closer to me than myself. This is definition. So whether I am a sinner or I am a saint, God is closer to me than myself. But when I am a sinner, sinner meaning here not recognizing God, it is me that is not aware of God's proximity to me. That's why I think he is far. It's not because he is far, because by definition, he is still giving me life. It means the life, his, his, his attributes are still shining here. The sun rises to all, everyone, right? Similar to that, uh, it is shining everyone. So, so, uh, so when we feel... It's good to understand mm -hmm. that point because I think people sometimes make judgments when you see somebody who constantly is sinning or something. You know, they, they make judgments that, that God is far away from that person. Mm -hmm. And that is not the truth. Yes, because we imagine God to be there. And then we imagine that we are here and he, the person is here. Whereas, in fact, all what religion is telling us, reminding us who is close to us, not bringing him close, because he's already he's already closer to me than myself. So, so what what actually the the, the teachings are, are reminding us is, oh, don't you see who is giving you food? See, don't you see who is bringing you up? So it doesn't God who is bringing you into being, who is. Uh, thriving, making you to thrive with everything. It's not, it's reminding you of who is already here, not of who will come afterwards. Or just, just take off your, your, uh, your blinders. Your blinders. Yes. That is our problem. It's <laughs> our blinders. Mm -hmm. Is we are the ones who are closing our eyes. The sun is already lit. And it's in my imagination. In my, because it's already good. It's me that is not seeing it. So then prayer is a cleansing activity in the sense of reminding me of who it is it, who it is that is, that is closer to me than myself, that responds to all my needs. Oh Allah, you are the one who is letting me now talk to you. You are the one who... Is, that's why they say, actually, if you were drawn to God, thank God, because it means He has invited you to His court. How come we have this even need to know Him if He didn't put that need in our hearts? And that need, in fact, is in every person. But sometimes we we misunderstand what that need is. We think it is in things. In fact, we are looking for the, we think it's in, in the beautiful things. In fact, we are looking, trying to find the source of beauty. We find it is in finding a love of a, of a finite being. In fact, it is in finding the source of all love. We think it is in, in uh, extending my life to 100 years of age. In fact, it is this feeling of, of wanting to live forever is in is a is what he has put in me as looking for him the one who lives forever and who has invited me to live forever so it's it's all actually the invitations are all there i am the one who has been misinterpreting them so we just need to record oh. so i have a question hmm. all right let's say there's somebody you know who isn't recognizing god hmm really making decisions that take it down a different path. Mm. In Islam, do you have this, do you have intercessory prayer where yes. you have a yes. prayer for that person? Astaghfirullah ali wa lakum. This is a prayer of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. I ask forgiveness for myself and for you. Mm -hmm. It means I can ask for forgiveness for my friend. Mm -hmm. And in fact, a prayer 
of my friend, or even I don't have to know the person, is sometimes more effective and sincere because the person who is praying for me doesn't have any uh, personal gain out of the prayer. So that's why when we extend our prayer to all humanity, to all, we open ourselves, in fact, yeah, we, if we want to use today's uh, words, we are sending this energy, this vibration, that's, you know, today they use these words. But that is what it really is. We send this uh, to everyone. Uh, and if there is three ways to invite some passion to Islam. The first one is to acknowledge yourself. It's, you know, like how to talk with that person. If he believes in science, if he believes in uh, nature, how do you think about it? So if you try to manipulate with him with that, so he will understand that. The second thing is to pray for him. But God tells us to um, get educated. Uh, Ikra. Mm -hmm. The first word that it became Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is Ikra, which is weak. Mm -hmm. So that's part of his hand. Learning, understanding. That goes on. That's part of his hand. And then, if we can do that, it comes with prayer. So pray, prayer in the sense of wishing good for everyone. What a beautiful way to connect with, with the creation. Is it, mm. is it often prayer because this is just curious, I'm really curious, um, that people are praying for prayer to go out for one's enemies, like those who are, like, I mean, like right now, ISIS. Should we be praying for ISIS? Should we be praying they really find the truth of Allah and the love? And of course, of course. I mean, what a beautiful, any adversary, any uh, uh, when you see any mistake out there, instead of uh, uh, wishing all the very bad, if we say, oh Allah, turn their heart towards you, let them see you. They are actually doing this because of lack of knowing you. Mm -hmm. You are the one who turns the hearts. Mm -hmm. uh, so that becomes death. And, and that, in fact, is also transforms our heart because we, we shouldn't have a place for hatred inside our heart. For, for, it's a heavy burden. We can, of course, hate the, hate the evil as an evil because we want the goodness as goodness. But, but for people... We wish, uh, we, they find goodness. So whatever God's goodness is for them. And what a beautiful uh, way of, uh, of uh, opening our hearts. And we are in, in so much in need of that, in fact. Uh, because uh, we forgot to pray that way. Uh, you know, there is two ways of that, praying to our enemy. Number one is peace in our heart that we're going to gain for ourselves. But the second thing is, when they become a good people, they're not going to kill our kids. And all the people, they're going to live in peace. So when you pray for them, for yourself, you can do it. It's not coming from just nowhere, just being um, peaceful. No, it's coming back to you. If you pray for Daesh and they don't do terrorism, who's going to gain? The Islam. Which is us. And, and, and never losing hope. Never losing hope. It's, because it, it sometimes we lose hope. No. Uh, well, so no. that's our problem. It will come. That's something, no that, that, that's something that I've struggled with because yeah. in reality there is a lot of things. You know, against yes. people. Even from prominent um, you know, leaders will, you know, you know, the common enemies of the all know will pray for their demise. I think so. I think so. Only maybe sometimes when it is necessary, as a as a way to protect, especially if there is a an active thing. Of course, you say, you know, um, uh, you, 
See, peace is always first, but justice always also sometimes is necessary. So, so your heart should be for the bigger puzzle. But sometimes, of course, if there is a, 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 a practical thing, of course, you pray for the prosecutors to the, the ones who are uh, committing the crime to to find a way to to not to stop them from doing that so now that's that's an active form but but in general let's say you say i wish they didn't have that in their heart so it's, so i think both both are not exclusive to each other sometimes unfortunately we make it exclusive and and we find that this other kind of prayer is more stronger then what happens is we see people not forgiving each other's just uh, almost like just seeing these kind of people are done. So we stopped bringing that good uh, prayer towards them. You know what I mean? So, so I think uh, we need to find the balance in that. Yes. Yes, peace. Many times uh, we we say that we won't have peace without justice, but I I think that is misunderstanding of the of the teachings, because uh, in the practical terms, many times uh, justice comes after peace has been set when people start to talk to each other. We see that in the life of Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him himself, when he made many peace, peace treaties, and the famous one of them is peace of Hudaybiyah, uh, where many of his uh, uh, companions were unhappy with the peace because they so thought that there was injustice. This is not the right, nice way to make peace because this is, we have many rights that are... He said, no, no, let's just make peace. So peace was first. Uh, and that is a transforming agent. Many times after the peace happens, the, the, the waters start to flow. So things will change, hearts will change. I gave you an example of last week. If I was seeking justice at that very moment, I would have called the police, for instance, for my neighbor. Right, right. But, but I said, let's have peace, and I went with a different way, and then I, we became so many very close friends. For, for one year that we stayed there, my neighbor mourned my lawn. <laughs> you know, that, this is a, I wasn't expecting that. But, but that is something that came out of some... So, so the, these are fruits of, of sometimes just letting the peace come first. Yeah. Uh, we are many times concentrated so much on, uh, you know, revenge that, yes, yes. that we forget about uh, even the possibility of there being peace. But we see the life of Prophet Muhammad or, or many of the prophets uh, where uh, the enemy, uh, there is a verse that we talked about last week. Uh, don't turn to your enemy with a mm, yeah. with hatred. Uh, he, he, might become, he might become your close friend. So turn, turn to him, turn his enmity with, with, with peace, uh, which is a very, yes, exactly. That is, the, that is the difficult path. But that is the transforming path. That is what we need. Not not uh, 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 dividing but bringing together not concentrating on the differences but concentrating on the similarities uh, that uh, letting the the love mercy and peace be the the force instead of even today sometimes you know certain things happen to different groups uh, some some days to some you know Muslims somewhere sometimes to African Americans somewhere whatever uh, uh, instead of this group uh, reacting and and seeing themselves as victims it is the time actually to open the doors to seek more love and mercy not to not to go with this vengeance but uh, uh, um, let the fire be extinguished by the love it's because because the reason this uh, things are happening is the fear for this fear to go away love needs to come into the uh, picture 
Uh, and when that happens, the transformation happens automatically. You actually don't need to do it. Uh, love does it. <laughs> love does it. Uh, otherwise, we'll just be, you know, um, in our small uh, neighborhoods, just making to build barriers. Barriers. Some groups and uh, against the Muslim, uh, not Muslim belief, okay, protecting the Muslim belief, okay, protecting the giving the hardship to Muslim. Yeah, or uh, or let's say okay. protecting the hu human humanity, protecting one's life, protecting one's ability to uh, have their own religion. For all, actually, religions, there is that. Uh, yes, yes. Personal affairs, there is yes. no end. Yes. In the yes. Islam. And for example, there is a uh, example uh, in uh, in this time, okay, ISIS, ISIS. Okay, they are all giving some troubles to Islam. Okay, for that reason, this is the enemy for all Muslim uh, against the Muslim population. Okay, that is why it gives the and the hardships to. All Islam groups. Many people not adopting to Islam, uh, introduced to Islam, this is ISIS. Mm. So, so maybe we can, if we want to generalize it, the real enemy is really yeah. the enemy that is that is always uh, close to our heart, which is the the. Well, not seeing God, and yeah. and whoever is 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 not seeing uh, the love of God, the mercy of God, is following that real enemy. So if if that goes away, meaning that the person stops to do that, it's not the person himself. It's, it's the it's this this uh, sickness, if you will. So the evil that's evil uh, yeah. is the enemy. It's yes. not the person yes. doing yes. the evil. Yes. It's the act of. Yeah. In fact, in fact, you can even see it more even with a bigger heart. The one who is doing the evil is sick with that evil. So, so he, there is that sickness in the person's heart. So you feel, oh, may Allah heal this person from this evil sickness. It means now you are even... Uh, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ And we have not sent you except as mercy and love to all creation. It means you are extending that mercy and love uh, to all with this feeling. That doesn't mean it's okay for evil. No, it's opposite. You are praying for the evil to be extinguished. It's, the problem is not the building. The problem is the fire in the building. The, what we need to do is just to get the fire extinguisher. And that's what we, that is our prayer in this whole, the whole uh, mission of this place is, is a fire extinguisher. How can we uh, remind ourselves, our children, our family, and whoever we are in contact with, with the uh, amazing uh, uh, God, with our amazing creator uh, that is inviting us to, uh, uh, to a life of peace. Uh, so that's the extinguisher. Now, uh, many buildings, uh, building mean our hearts, might be in fire. So we are just praying to have this extinguisher. Uh, uh, yeah. yeah. You know, that's what it, uh, God said in the Mount of So uh, with like, ISIS being there, that's really, it's not against Islam. It's with the Islam. Because that makes people, how many people that they convert to Islam? I mean, people that they convert to Islam after ISIS. Because that's not a glam, but it became a <coughs> So it makes a lot of people open their mind and heart and read about the real Islam and become a real Muslim because they understand that's not a glam. So that's God, the Quran, but it says it's not our God. So 
But that stay was too much. But it, 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 the, the, the good things come with the bad things. We all hate fighting. But don't see the other side, how many people that we start looking at it, yeah? Or our own, uh, our own hearts start to say, you know, what is the, is, is, is this it? Uh, so we start to be, be more interested, to be more example. looking for the truth, whatever that is. Yeah. Even being good make us better. Because you know what? I want to defend this now. I want to be the best I could do that telling my neighbor that is ISIS, that's not Islam. What we practice in peace, that's the Islam. So you try to push yourself as much as you can to, to be the better than you can. So alhamdulillah, because the, the Islam is dominant and it's going to be, and it's going to be there forever. No doubt about it. I think it's just like any It's in fact, yes, it's in fact a reminder to myself, do I have traces of this in my heart to go and make this, you know, scanning. Uh, and oh, you know, maybe I thought that way or, and, and suddenly we start to examine, we start to look for, see, it's... Uh, so, sorry to... <laughs> Yes. Uh, yeah, we need to also maybe remind, uh, 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 you know, our child, ourselves also that it's generally not the mistake of that child too. Uh, unfortunately, they do not 
many people do not question what is fed. So what we can do is that we can see this as an opportunity to maybe uh, send a gift to the child or, or show them uh, uh, the beauty of, of our un understanding. Uh, and, and many times this might be transformative. Instead of uh, uh, having that hatred, actually say, you know, actually, uh, this is what we, we think. And, and instead of uh, turning uh, with enmity, maybe when we give a flower, the student will say, oh, see how Muslims are good. I thought, so why is the TV saying about this? Then, then we, we start to see, to, 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 to make that difference instead of... Uh, well, they have to protect the child's identity. Yes. Thank you. 
get too involved in anything, so she tries to cut it off. They try not to say anything to the parents. That is why they didn't want the teacher to tell me anything. But that's her that's job. It's kind of, that's, that's very... Well, well, if you need help before you mention the teacher, did you already mention the teacher talk to you? No, I didn't mention it. Okay. So my thought was, I want to have, forget the teacher, I want to have a meeting with a principal or assistant principal, you know. And also nowadays, we would like people that have a situation like yours to take a note and uh, write, I mean, talk to care. Mm -hmm. Because, uh, what's his name, works for care? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. No, he works for ICNA, but for yeah. care now, uh, um, yes, she yeah, be, because that child is ignorant about anything in his life. All he hears is, he's, he's just doing a repetition yeah. of what he hears at home, yeah. okay? And so that's why I cannot blame the child, I don't want to be penalized for something that he's not, you know, has no knowledge of. But the same time, I need to protect my daughter. Sure. Absolutely. And that's why you need to. Uh, and make it clear that you're not looking for any punishment for anybody. You just want to have a. You just want to have a. Yeah. 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 Yeah.